So you're probably all wondering, what am I looking at right now? <laughs> My question to you is, what's missing from this picture? Maybe you're thinking it's a person. Maybe that person is thinking to themselves like you're thinking to yourself right now. Maybe there's somebody else entirely who has just one thing on their mind. And maybe that person needs to watch out for the puddle. But none of those are the answer. The answer, of course, is data. In the next 30 minutes, I'm going to tell you a story about how, with a group of incredibly talented people, I helped turn Facebook's bathroom walls into a canvas for data visualization art. And my goal today is to leave you here all feeling excited and inspired to do something similar at your own place of business. My name is Matt Sack, and my journey with data started eight years ago. I used to be a teacher of mathematics in middle schools and high schools in Boston and Brooklyn. And I loved using my students' data to inform my own instruction and get better. After that, I moved into the education policy world, uh, first as a school administrator in Memphis, and then later on with the K-12 team at the Gates Foundation. And most recently, for the last three years, I've been working at Facebook. I started out as a data analyst, and for the last year or so, I've been managing teams of smart people who use insights uh, to help leaders make decisions. So quick, oh, skipped ahead there. Quick uh, preview, quick preview of what we're going to talk about today. First, you're going to meet the publication, visualize this. And then I'm going to talk through three lessons that I learned over the course of a year of getting this off the ground. And the first lesson is don't go it alone. And here you're going to meet a former Iron Biz champion. And then the second lesson is to tell stories. You're going to learn uh, why Jeff Bezos stopped and banned PowerPoints in his executive meetings. And finally, build a community. And here you might pick up on a little known fact about Mark Zuckerberg. And then I'm going to wrap up with some best practices and a call to action for how you could do this at your own place of business. Um, so fair warning here, there might be a little bit of potty humor in this presentation. Uh, normally I would just say earmuffs, but you're all wearing headphones, so I can't do that. So if you want to spare your ears, now's the time to leave. Okay, everybody on board? All right, awesome. So let's go back to a bathroom wall to answer the question, how did this all get started? Uh, flashback to 2013. There's an engineer at Facebook who wanted a way to share code snippets and technical updates with his friends. And he created the publication you're seeing here on the left called The Weekly Push. And as you can imagine, for a bathroom periodical in bathroom stalls, The Weekly Push has a couple meanings. Uh, but what it really referred to was the fact that Facebook used to push code out on a weekly basis. And a few years later, a second publication came around, the one you see on the right here. It's called the Product and Business Marketing Update. And the purpose of that publication was to share customer success stories internally. And when I got to Facebook in late 2015, I thought there's a big gap here. There's something missing. So as an analyst, the weekly push didn't quite appeal to me. I'm not an engineer. And similarly, I'm not a marketer. So the product and business update, business marketing update, didn't really appeal to me either. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had a data-focused publication? So a uh, year later, in October 2017, Visualize This was born. But I could not have done this without the help of an incredibly talented group of people. And that leads me to my first lesson today, which is if you're going to try this, don't go it alone. So how many of you have been to an Iron Viz championship before by a show of hands? Okay, we've got a smattering of hands in the audience. It is my favorite part of Tableau Conference. and It is happening tomorrow. I really highly recommend you all go. And so flashback to 2016 in Austin, Texas. And I was sitting in the same seats that you were in, looking up at the, uh, the, the, the panel up there. And sitting there was Shine Pulakathra who was the 2015 Iron Viz champion. And as luck would have it, he had just joined Facebook. I thought, wouldn't it be cool to get to meet Shine? Later that week, I had a chance to at our company lunch. And I talked to Shine and a few other people at the table. And I said, what do you think about the idea of having a data-focused publication at Facebook? And immediately, they're on board. And Shine said, actually, I also have to introduce you to a few people at Facebook I know who are passionate about data visualization. So with that, 
the editorial board was born. Now I want to show you an example of how this team of people helped evolve the idea and make it so much better. What you see here is our first ever logo that I designed. It was the, supposed to be the header of the publication. And I, I just wanted to copy the weekly push. So I called it the weekly biz. I also thought it'd be funny to say, take a look at the weekly biz while you take a whiz. That didn't pan out. But more than that, I showed the, uh, I showed the first logo to my director, who is a Brit. And he said, you know, the word viz actually has an entirely different connotation in the UK. And Facebook's a global company. What I didn't want to do is offend people right off the bat. So we all went back to the drawing board and we thought, okay, what's a, a better name? And somebody in the group came up with a name, how about Visualize This? So this is our second ever logo. We kind of adapted it. And we still have this word cloud about data visualization embedded. And somebody on the team added this line chart to anchor the fact that we're a data visualization publication with a visualization. And we went live with it on October 2nd, 2017. And the resounding feedback was, oh my gosh, that's too much. There's too much going on. And not only that, but we had to compete for people's attention. There are already two publications out there. So people felt overwhelmed by all this information. And one of our editorial board members, uh, Harvey Whiting, a friend of Shine's, who, he's got a background in design, and he said, let me take a stab at this. I think that I can simplify it. And this is Harvey's final, uh, final logo and header. And I love it because it's simple, and yet it's visually appealing. It draws your eye to it. So, and just to take you from that evolution, we started here, and we ended here. So much better. And I couldn't have done that without a team. And we had an idea. We had a logo. We had a brand. Now all we needed was content. And my biggest fear going into this was, we're a weekly periodical. How are we going to generate content? And the answer was to tell stories. So uh, how many of you, is anybody here from Amazon? Show of hands. Oh, cool. Um, I was reading an article earlier this year about how Jeff Bezos banned PowerPoint presentations from his executive meetings. And instead, he wanted people to use long-form memos. The idea here is that narrative is the way we communicate. We tell stories and communicate using stories. The author of that article went on to say that we process our world in narrative, and more importantly for leadership, people recall and retain information more effectively when it's presented in the form of a story. So we wanted to give the community a way to share their stories. And they needed a vehicle to do that. So we came up with a template. This is the actual template that we use uh, for Visualize This. And the thing that I loved about the weekly push and the product and business marketing update is its consistency. Readers know what to expect every week, and people thrive on consistency. So this would be the template we would let people share their stories with. And as you can see, every issue starts with a visualization. Of course, we're a visualization-based publication. And then we needed a way to communicate with all sorts of audiences, people who are both technical and non-technical. So it made me think back to uh, early on in my, my Facebook tenure, I took a two-week data camp. It's basically training for Facebook people to use data. And one of the breakout sessions I loved the most was called Creating High Impact Figures. And what the presenter shared is people need a way to understand things quickly and visually. If you're a product designer, you need that. And he shared this, this three-pronged approach to telling a story with data. And I want to give it to you today. Please feel free to borrow this. So the three components of any story with data are first, the data. Did you ask the right questions and frame the problem to find the proper metrics? Once you have the data, what are the insights you derive from that data? Like, how does this visualization help you, or this data help you find signal in the noise? And finally, the most important part is once you have the insights, how are you translating those insights into impact? And then how is that insight changing some sort of business strategy or decision? Without that, you really haven't done your job as an analyst. So now we had a framework, and we needed a way to take this from something that was just static and posted on bathroom walls, something that the community would engage with. Which leads me to my third lesson, build a community. 
This is not what we set out to do when we started the publication. Uh, but we thought, what a better way to build a community with, than with the tools that we use and build at Facebook. Is anybody here familiar with the Workplace uh, collaborative platform? Raise your hand if you actually use it. Awesome, I see a few hands here. So Workplace is essentially Facebook's B2B product, and it's what we use internally to share stories, post updates, and connect with each other. This is a screenshot of the Visualize This group that we created on Workplace. And when we started this group, just a few dozen people were part of it. And as the publication got kicked off, that grew to 100 people. And today, after our first anniversary, we have over 700 people in this group. And it's where they come to post their stories. So I want to show you an example of a conversation that we started with one of the issues we published. Early on in our life cycle, uh, Shine and Harvey, the two folks I mentioned, they came up with an idea for a Viz 101 series. It would be a four-part series where they would talk about data visualization concepts and theory and how you turn it into practice. So this second issue is about conveying general or precise estimates using different principles like Gestalt principles. And one of the things they talk about, and I'm zooming here, zooming into the issue, one thing they mentioned is that over 250 million people in the world have low vision. And uh, in the US alone, it's estimated that 7% of men are red-green colorblind. And a little known fact about Mark Zuckerberg is he is red-green colorblind. And the story goes that's why Facebook is blue, because he can see the blue. And so if your visualization doesn't work for your CEO, you have a problem. And what Shine and Harvey prompted people to think about at the end of the issue is to consider, will your visualization work for everyone? We wanted to make data accessible to anyone. So a few days later, we saw a post in the Visualize This group, workplace group, of somebody from the accessibility team. And he thanked the authors of that issue for bringing these concepts of inclusion and diversity into the, a different domain. So we had started a conversation. And a few months later, a product designer at Facebook continued the conversation. A guy by the name of Andrew Liebchen, he was our first ever product designer to submit content. He did a deep dive on this idea of color hue and how you use color hue to tell stories with data. He talks about a few different color scales and what those color scales demonstrate. One of the things that Andrew talks about in this issue is this cultural idea that red means stop and green means go. You see it all the time. If you've used Excel conditional formatting, you've seen the stoplight built in there. It's terrible. It's not accessible. And early on, uh, I submitted an issue to the editorial board for review about a dashboard that I had built and our team used for far too long called the Quick View dashboard. And it was built entirely on this stoplight principle, red, yellow, green. And the editorial board said, Honestly, I don't think we can publish this because it doesn't conform to the best practices that we ourselves are, are pitching. So I showed it to my wife, Leah. I often show things to her. She's a great second pair of eyes. And she took a look at my dashboard, and she could not see the reds or the greens. My wife happens to be one of 0.5% of women who are colorblind. So second tip, if your visualization doesn't work for your spouse, you probably have an issue, and you should rethink it. Um, so. We had continued the conversation, and a few days later, oh, by the way, Andrew prompted people to go to this publicly available tool called the Color Brewer Palette Generator. I absolutely recommend it. It's a free publicly available tool where you can check your own visualization to see if it's accessible to people who are colorblind. So after this issue got published, we saw a post a few days later from somebody asking, have we thought about applying the suggestions that we pitch and visualize this? to our own tools, and you know, that way all employees could benefit from these types of things. And Visualize This is not just about Tableau. We cover lots of tools. We build a number of tools internally to work with data. So how are we using these best practices to improve our own tools? A couple weeks later, we saw a, a, a shout out. Thanks posted from somebody on the core biz team, sorry, on the feed integrity team. And an engineer on that team had actually submitted a code change to change a graphic they used that was based on a red-green color, uh, color scale to, to work with a colorblind colleague. And it, it was incredible. I'd seen the, the code that he submitted. 
but it was all sort of spurred by this conversation we had started. And so it had jumped from something that was static and on the wall to something that actually had tangible impact. All right. I want to talk about three best practices for you to get started uh, with something like this in your own place of work. Now, I realize you're not going to be able to necessarily copy exactly what we did, but I hope that you can borrow some piece of it. So as I go through, I want you to think, does this stimulate some idea that I can use or take back? So I'm going to bring us back to where we started, to the bathroom, and I promise these tips won't be full of crap. The first one is look around. Who have you connected with here at Tableau Conference 2018? Now you might be here as part of a 50 person, or you might be here with 50 people from your company, from 10 different departments, and you just want a way to share ideas or best practices with the people in your company. Or maybe you're here from a small nonprofit, and imagine how powerful it would be if you had a way to share with a group of data-focused NGOs, share those best practices. So look around, who have you connected with? Second is find your distribution channel. And I leave this picture up here because it's the perfect example of a captive audience. You have people's attention here. But maybe that wouldn't work for you. Maybe uh, you have a bagel Wednesday once a month and people congregate around the toaster so you could put this above the toaster and get people's attention. Maybe a printed edition wouldn't work for you at all. And instead something online like a newsletter would be the way you could get this out there. But just find the way that you can engage with people. And third, when all else fails, bribery. We were really lucky to work with our customer success team here at Tableau, who offered us a, uh, some swag to offer to people to submit content. And again, my biggest fear going into this whole thing was that we just wouldn't have content every week. And after a year, we've gotten over 38 unique submissions from people telling their stories about data at Facebook. All right, I want to show you one more issue. This is an online-only edition that Shine published. It was published on April 1st, 2018. And uh, it's visualization best practices. I'm going to read an excerpt here. Oh, Shine says, sorry about that. Pie charts and donut charts have been getting a bad rap for no good reason. Studies have found that when you use 20 or more slices in a pie chart, you can convey complexity more effectively than a bar chart. And he gives this beautiful example. He then goes on to say that typography experts have reversed their earlier views on fonts like Papyrus and Comic Sans. It has found that these fonts make us feel like a child again and can be effective in kicking in early learning instincts. We've thus decided to change our fonts in our newsletter as well. So we had a few people write into us, you know, scratching their heads, and we're like, really? And of course, this is our April Fool's issue. So my last tip is have fun with it. Like everybody involved, everybody who's doing this, it's an extracurricular for them. None of us get paid to do this. We do it because we're passionate about data and data visualization. So if you're going to engage in it, have fun. Find a way to engage with your audience. All right, so a quick recap of what we talked about today. First, you met Visualize This, the bathroom periodical that has a distribution of over 20,000 readers in 15 offices globally with Facebook. Then I talked through three lessons that I learned over the course of a year of getting this off the ground. The first was don't go it alone if you're going to try this. Find a team of people who can help you push your, your thinking and, and make it better. Second was tell stories. Stories are the most effective way to communicate to people. And data, unless it's married with some sor sort of narrative, it loses its effect. And finally, build a community. Find a way to engage with your audience and turn it from something that's static to something that is offline and actually has impact. And then I talked through three best practices that you could use at your own place of business to get something like this started. So I want to wrap up and leave you with a few words from a data visualization icon and a native of my hometown of Cheshire, Connecticut, Edward Tufte. And Tufte says, what gets left out is the narrative between the bullets. So what I'd love for you to all think is, get rid of those bullet points, and what story could you tell with data and how could you get your peers to share their stories as well? So I'll leave you with this question. What's your story? Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference.